In today's video, we're gonna talk about main gaining, the idea that you can add muscle without putting on a lot of body fat. And we're gonna compare it to the idea of bulking, where we focus only on adding lean body mass, but also aren't afraid to put on a little fat in the process. I'm gonna give you my exact thoughts and explain a detailed plan on how you can reach your goal. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com. And today's video topic comes from a different resource. So Pro Physique does a transformation challenge twice a year. The next one will be starting in February. And in that group, we get some amazing conversation talking points. So I want to answer a question that someone in the group asked us. So Aaron Woodson basically said, let's start a conversation. Is main gaining real? So whenever we're going to start a conversation like this, I think it's important to understand where this is coming from. Now, Aaron is a part of our Summer Sculpt Transformation Challenge, where it's a 90 day transformation challenge where we give away a lot of cash and prizes, but the goal is to improve body composition, right? We're awarding money based on the changes that people are making, i.e. less body fat, more muscle. So for someone who's been dieting for a while, main gaining can seem very important. Why? Because the idea is that once you've lost a lot of body fat, most of us wanna continue the journey of improving. So they don't wanna put a lot of body fat back on. They're also worried that if they try to stay too lean, they won't be able to add muscle. So let's talk about where this really happens. Where is the place that we can get to and add the most muscle? A lot of this is gonna come down to two things. My personal history as an athlete, as someone who's been resistance training for 30 years, I've gone through every cycle. I've gone through bulking cycles, main gaining cycles, lean gaining cycles, getting shredded. I'll show you guys here. I've been 5% body fat before. I've also probably been 25 to 30% body fat before during bulking phases, right? So I wanna show you guys that I understand this journey on a different level. Also. I coach athletes. I coach bodybuilders. That is what I do. So I'll show you some of those transformations. Um, and I have some very specific people that I've helped lose a lot of body fat, keep it off and then rebuild. So let's talk about the term main gaining. From my perspective, it means that we are focusing on keeping our body fat stable, eating around our maintenance calories and adding muscle. So is this possible? Absolutely. Where is the sweet spot for this to be possible? Is it possible at four or five or 6% body fat? Not likely. Is it possible at eight to 10 to 12% body fat? Absolutely. Is it possible at even higher body fats? Absolutely. I think there is a sweet spot where our bodies respond very well hormonally to allow us to add muscle. For every single person, that's gonna be a little bit different. It's also gonna come down to where you are at in your life. For example, if you said to me when I was 22 years old, you can add muscle without adding body fat, but what it's gonna require is diligence on your part with diet, diligence on your part with consistency in the gym, diligence on your part in taking care of your overall health and well-being, i.e. sleep and these kind of things and low stress. And honestly, when I was 22, I wanted to do two things. I wanted to lift heavy, eat a lot of food, and I wanted to go party, okay? So at that time in my life, no. Main gaining was not a priority for me. So what did I adopt for instead? When I got to eat, go all in, make sure I'm getting a ton of food and a ton of protein. When I go to the gym, go all in, and I would have some fantastic stretches. And honestly, I am a six foot three, I'm right now 205 pounds, and I'm probably at or below 10% body fat, just maintaining here. And I can tell you when I was that age, I was probably 180, 190 pounds, and all I cared about guys was the scale going up. I was often referred to as tall and skinny. so. I was probably a little bit self-conscious about the fact that I was on the thinner side. So I was always focused on the scale going up. And for that reason, I'll show you some pictures here. I've had periods where I was more body fat heavy than I would like to be. However, at six foot three, when I put a shirt on and some pants on, I can carry it well, even if I'm 240, 250 pounds. But for me, that was a different time in my life. Now, what I've come to realize is that main gaining comes down to two things. One. How long and how consistent have you been resistance training? There is a period of time where we can put on muscle very rapidly, maybe even as much as one to two pounds of lean body mass per month, which if you think of a steak, think how much that is. That's the early phases of building. So if you are new to this sport, you're gonna have the opportunity to main gain much more than someone who has been doing this for 30 years like myself. However, the real value, if you want to main gain, the real benefit is going to be that you can actually see those changes because you are leaner. One of the tough things about putting on so much body fat is you don't really see the muscle you're adding. Body fat acts as a filter between our skin and our muscle, 
kind of makes us look softer and rounder. Now, it can look great in shirts, it can look great on the scale, but if you want to add muscle, you're kind of newer to this, you can actually probably eat at or just slightly below maintenance and build muscle. I've seen it before. People are gonna respond until they've been training for a while, maybe six months up to two years, then it's gonna be more important that you are getting adequate amounts of calories for performance to happen in the gym. So main gaining is all about where you're at in your life cycle of, of training, okay? For someone like myself, I've been training 30 years. There are very few things, very few variables that I can manipulate that are gonna change things for me on a huge basis. At this point, I'm just trying to fine tune, get a little bit stronger here, add a little bit mus more muscle there. With my clients, I've got competitors that are as young as 18, 19, 20 years old, and guess what? I'm excited for those journeys because they are changing weekly, monthly, especially if they don't have proper training protocols and experiences, proper nutrition setup. We can see amazing things. So where are you at in your journey, right? It's all gonna come down to what's personally best for you. So just how many calories do you need to build muscle? Well, the definition of maintenance calories is what we need to survive. So if you are training hard and you are eating at maintenance calories, you just need to be slightly above that in theory. However, theory is very tough to dictate. So what I like to focus on with my athletes are a few things. We take some waist measurements, we take some hip measurements, we take some pictures, and we just make sure that we're not putting on too much body fat that we're getting uncomfortable, while at the same time, we are seeing performance increases in the gym. Are you getting a few more reps? Are you seeing a little bit more shape and volume to the muscles? This is where being accountable is really gonna be a part of this. If you don't wanna be accountable, then the lean bulk might not be for you, the idea of main gaining. However, if you just want to see the scale go up and you just wanna get stronger and you don't mind adding some body fat, I will say, I enjoyed those bulking phases. I enjoyed slapping some extra weight on the bar. Heck, I will say this, when you have more body fat, your leverages increase. You are able to perform some of your lifts heavier. Now your relative strength might not go up, but your absolute strength will go up, meaning you are handling heavier weights. You are getting a different stimulus than if you were a little bit leaner. Is it important to you? That's what you have to decide. Main gaining is simply a matter of paying attention to your protein, your carbs, your fats, putting them in a place where science and evidence has shown us how to be successful. Now, if you have no idea how to do that, I have right here a free macro calculator. You would simply go on there, fill out all the information and choose your goal of building muscle, okay? You can also choose fat loss, rapid fat loss, maintaining all these things. But the idea would be you would follow that plan, train hard, and then you would see how you respond after a couple weeks. If you notice that the waist is getting bigger, that is body fat, especially for men, the lower back, the lower abdomen. When we start to see those things change, sometimes it's the face, depends how much body fat you have. It's going to dictate how much body fat we can maintain while we add muscle. So where does that leave this conversation? Is it real? Yes, main gaining is absolutely real. Is it right for you? That's something that you have to decide. People often ask me, hey coach, should I be building? Should I be cutting? Really, it comes down to where you see yourself at the current time. If you get uncomfortable with body fat, there's no reason why you can't just lose some body fat slowly and continue to progress in your lifts. I often find that when my competitors start prep, we get stronger the entire prep. Why? Well, because I'm keeping carbohydrates in there. I'm keeping training performance in there. We're also taking deload weeks, make sure recovery is good. And we're putting an emphasis on the gym. Why? Because muscle is an important part of bodybuilding. If you want to main gain, if you want to build muscle, you're going to have to make the gym one of the higher priorities. You're going to have to make your workouts quality and your nutrition quality. You cannot have just one or the other. They are both going to have a huge impact. I would also suggest that you make sure your life is low stress and your recovery is high. This is the perfect environment for adding muscle, keeping body fat low and feeling better. This is the best I've ever felt in my life. I've taken all these lessons I've learned over the last 30 years, applied them to myself, gone back to school, coached clients and just experimented. You, the person watching this video are the only one that is gonna be responsible for the way you look and feel on a daily basis. So it is up to you to decide what is right for you. I don't let what you guys want influence me. When I was younger, I probably did. So at this point in my life, I haven't had a drink of alcohol in over a year. It's been almost a year. I've really been consistent with my workouts this year. And lo and behold, I'm stronger. I have more muscle and I have less body fat than I have at any point in my life. And that's where I'm at in this current situation. 
That's what my life allows. That's what my goals matter to me. So can you do it? Absolutely. For men, I would say probably 10 to 12% body fat is about as low as you need to go. When you start to get to below that, nutrient partitioning, recovery are going to start to be tough. You know, if the leaner you get, the more particular you're going to have to be with your diet and your recovery. The more body fat you have, the less particular you're probably going to have to be because your recovery is going to be better. Your strength is going to be higher. So you got to find the happy place for you. For women, you know, 16 to 18% body fat is getting pretty lean, but I have some competitors that stay even leaner than that that are females. Um, it's just about where they find their hunger, their performance and their happiness and their clothes and how they feel on a daily basis match up. Some of us have a fitness lifestyle. Guys, you have to accept that some people, people you see on YouTube, people you see on Instagram, people you see in the gym, they're just more dedicated than you. Doesn't mean they're on drugs. I'm a lifetime natural athlete. Doesn't mean that, that they are somehow better than you. It simply means that they're in a different place in your life. I've learned to accept this as a part of my journey and it's made it so much more enjoyable, guys. Let's judge less and enjoy more. I'll talk to you tomorrow.